Hey Church family, Pastor Mario Navarro Jr. here, and I'm going to do a series of presentations that will hopefully help us as disciples for Christ become more successful and more confident in soul winning. If you haven't already seen my first presentation called Five Keys to Successful Evangelism, please go to our YouTube channel, EWE SDA Church, and check it out. In this presentation, we will talk about a subject called soul winning, the wise choice. So let's bow our heads for prayer as we begin. Father in heaven, we thank you for choosing us and wanting to use us as disciples for you. Lord, I just pray that as we talk about this subject, soul winning, the wise choice, help us, Lord, to make wise choices in our lives. Help us to be successful in soul winning. Help us to surrender to you so that your kingdom can grow by using us to help win others to your kingdom. So bless us, Lord, we pray. and We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, life is full of important choices. The direction our lives take is dependent upon the choices we make. We chart our course through life by our choices. Unfortunately, many people make choices only with reference to what brings them immediate pleasure. Then they miss life's greatest joys by making superficial choices. Now, there are two significant choices that will impact our lives here and through all eternity. The first and most serious choice is to commit our life to God. Friends, I'm telling you that this is indeed the most serious and the first choice that we need to make. We need to be committed to God. Now, Jesus challenged people in his day to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. The priority that towers over all others is to make God first in our lives. Jesus in this verse is telling us that our priority should be putting him first and his kingdom. The Old Testament spiritual giant Joshua stated this. He said, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 24 and verse 15. The choice to commit our life to God is the most important choice that we will ever make. Closely allied to the choice to commit our life to God is the choice to live for God. God calls us to a life of service. This choice speaks to the issue of our priorities, the things we consider important. And this leads to the next important choice. Choice number two, our priorities. The second important choice has to do with our priorities. Now here, our priorities will do many things. It will impact our relationships. Our priorities will affect our goals. Our priorities will determine how we spend our time and our priorities will influence our attitudes. I'll say this once again, just so I can make it clear. This is what our priorities will do. They will impact our relationships. They affect our goals. They determine how we spend our time and they influence our attitudes. Now the choice to place God's kingdom first will propel us to readjust our priorities in order to advance his kingdom. Our commitment to Jesus and an understanding of his principles of seeking first the kingdom of God leads us to reevaluate how we spend our time. When our hearts are transformed by God's grace, the natural result is to share his love with others. We long to share the Christ we know. Our deepest desire is to lead others to a knowledge of eternal life. We long for them to be saved in God's kingdom. And our greatest satisfaction comes as others share in the joy Jesus has placed in our lives. I have a question here. Question number one. What does the Bible reveal to be a wise choice? Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30. 
Now, I'm just going to read the last part. Proverbs 11, verse 30. The Bible says, And he that winneth souls is wise. Did you guys hear that? He that wins souls, the Bible says, is wise. Now, the most wonderful work in the world is soul winning. The greatest call that any of us can have is the call to win someone to Jesus. They can then enjoy fellowship with God in this life and have the joy of living with Him through all eternity. Question number two. What promise has God given to those who make this wise choice to become soul winners? Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, the Bible says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Hollywood stars, sports stars, and other stars come and go. But those who win souls will experience the results of their work forever. The results are eternal. People redeemed in the kingdom of God as a result of our cooperation with Christ will thank us through all eternity. Someday, you will meet someone in the earth made new who will say thank you for sharing Jesus with me. I'm here because you prayed for me. I'm here because you visited me. I'm here because you studied the Bible with me. Isn't that good news, friends? There is nothing more important that we can do in our lives. In fact, Ellen White states it powerfully in these words. Gospel Workers, page 18. The greatest work, the noblest work in which men and women can engage is to point sinners to the Lamb of God. That's the greatest work, friends, that we can do, is to point people to Jesus. Question number three. How does Jesus sum up the theme of his ministry? Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. The Bible says here, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Friends, Jesus was the master soul winner. He placed the kingdom of God first in his own life. He placed priority in this one thing, the eternal salvation of men and women. Even at the cross, he made one of life's wisest choices. God's one and only son was a soul winner. There is no higher calling than sharing God's love with others. Friends, the message of salvation is the message of the Bible. Let me say that again. The message of salvation is is the message of the Bible. Now, the Bible was written for two purposes. Number one, to learn how we can be saved. And number two, to share with others how they can be saved. Here's another quotation from the book Testimonies, volume four, page 53. To save souls should be the life work of everyone who professes Christ. We are debtors to the world for the grace given us of God, for the light which has shone upon us, and for the discovered beauty and power of truth. Here's a quotation from the book Desire of Ages, page 822. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come. Revelation 22, verse 17. Everyone who hears is to repeat the invitation. Whatever one's calling in life, his first interest should be to win souls for Christ. Christ would have his servant minister to sin sick souls. Desire of Ages, page 822. Question number four. What is the natural result of committing our lives to Christ? What happened when the demoniacs committed their lives to the Savior? Luke chapter 8. Verse 26 through 39. The Bible says here, They arrived at the country of the Gadareans, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils a long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou Son of God most high, 
I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oft times it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go into the deep. And there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus, and found the man, out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also, which saw it, told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadareans round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Now when the demoniacs consecrated themselves to Christ, they immediately began sharing his love with others. They shared what Christ had done for them with their friends and their neighbors. Here's an insightful comment by Ellen White from the book Christian Service, page 17. The two restored demoniacs were the first missionaries whom Christ sent to preach the gospel in the region of Decapolis. For a few moments only, these men had been privileged to hear the teachings of Christ. Not one sermon from his lips had ever fallen upon their ears. They could not instruct the people as the disciples who had been daily with Christ were able to do. But... They bore in their own persons the evidence that Jesus was the Messiah. They could tell you what they knew, what they themselves had seen and heard, and felt the power of Christ. This is what everyone can do whose heart has been touched by the grace of God. You see, friends, the only place to begin is where you are today. Ask the Lord to place a burden in your heart for one special person. Look for opportunities to share what Jesus has done for you. Open your heart and share how Christ has forgiven you and changed your own life. You see, church family, soul winning is much more than the art of sharing information. It is the art of reaching the heart. And this can occur if we ourselves are totally consecrated to God. We need to aim not much more for the brain, but for the heart of the individual. Now, we cannot effectively share a Jesus that we don't know. We will have little impact on the lives of others if Christ has had little impact on our lives. It's difficult to win someone to Christ if we have not been one to Christ ourselves. So if you have not fully committed your life to Christ, why not begin by making that commitment right now? If you have already surrendered your life to Jesus, why not make a deeper commitment to Him than you have ever made before? Why not open your heart fully to Jesus? Why not ask Him to take away anything that will keep you from becoming the most effective soul winner possible? See, friends, as we learn and discover how to be effective soul winners for Jesus, we need to pray this prayer. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me. And may I nobly do my part to win that soul 
for thee. Is that your desire, friends? Friends, I hope that we will make the best and wisest choice of all in our lives to be a soul winner. God bless you guys as we continue to learn how to be disciples for Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you again for your word. We thank you, Lord, for choosing and using us. And I pray, Lord, that the lessons that we learn today will help encourage us, will motivate us, will give us the confidence to be soul winners for you. Because, Lord, we know that you can use us to win souls for your kingdom. And we humbly ask that you do so. So bless us, Lord, we pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, until next time, friends, God bless you. This is Pastor Mario Navarro Jr. wishing you guys all grace and peace. Thank you.